family of Rochester police officer Tony Mazurkowitz and his law enforcement family came together today for the court appearance of the man charged with killing him. This has hit home to every single officer who sat in that courtroom and every single officer in this community. Those officers wanted to be there for the arraignment of Kelvin Vickers, the Massachusetts man charged with killing Officer Mazurkowitz and wounding his partner, Officer Sino Sang. Good afternoon, I'm Jenny Ryan. And I'm Doug Emblidge. Vickers pleaded not guilty. That's mandatory at this point. Chase Howell was in court this morning for the arraignment. Chase? Doug and Jenny, officers from RPD, Fairport Police, and deputies from the Monroe County Sheriff's Office were at the Hall of Justice for Vickers' arraignment. But the most notable today, the Mazurkowitz family, who were visibly emotional inside the courtroom. Kelvin Vickers was led into a Monroe County courtroom Wednesday facing family members of fallen Rochester police officer Tony Mazurkowitz and dozens of members of local law enforcement. This is support. This is support for the men and women in blue. Vickers is accused of ambushing officer Mazurkowitz and his partner, officer Sino Sang, on Bauman Street last month. Police say they were sitting in an unmarked vehicle on a murder investigation when Vickers allegedly fired 16 rounds into the back of their police vehicle. Mazurkowitz was struck twice in the upper body and Sang was shot three times. A 15-year-old girl in a nearby home was hit by a stray bullet. It's a tragedy and, you know, I'm looking forward to actually, you know, putting this, this case before a jury and getting a verdict. A grand jury indicted Vickers on eight counts, which include charges of aggravated murder and attempted aggravated murder. We would waive a full reading of all of the charges at this time and enter a not guilty plea to each of them. Vickers has a lengthy criminal history and was just released from a Massachusetts state prison in May. Could you just give us a little tidbit as to why he was in Rochester? Not going into full detail maybe, but something? I, I can't, that's you know part of the proof in this case, but as I said, as time goes on, you will learn more and more about Mr. Vickers and why he was here on the night of July 21st of 2022. The district attorney says the aggravated murder charge alleges that Vickers knew or reasonably should have known that he was shooting at a police officer. It's unclear when the case could go to trial, but the DA says they have hearings set for December and possibly sometime in the spring. If found guilty, he faces life in prison without parole. A family is seeking justice today after the murder of a teen in front of his home. 16-year-old Jaquees Davis was shot and killed Monday night on Pennsylvania Avenue. As Cheyenne Walker reports, his aunt is familiar with the pain of losing a nephew. Cheyenne? Yes, Jenny Davis's aunt is Wanda Ridgeway, who is well known in our community for her activism. This week, Rochester's gun violence crisis hit close to home for her, and it wasn't the first time. I said, I don't want it to end like this. This, this is too much. This is too much to bear. I, 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 I don't even know what else to say. I, we're not living to die. And it seems like that's what's happening. You know, like in our babies, we're losing babies. A son, a brother and friend is how Wanda Ridgeway remembers her nephew who fell victim to gun violence Monday night. He was shot on the front steps of his home as he was coming home from work. His five-year-old brother saw him laying down there on that ground. His sister, they don't deserve that. His parents don't deserve that. We need justice. Jacquees was the second nephew she's lost to gun violence. And the first was in 2006. It's devastating. My heart is broken to hear his sister, his mother, my, my nephew, you know, to, to cry. You know, it's like, it's, it's devastating. You know, I, I, I walk these, I go through this several times with other families. But when it hits home, it's, it's different. Ridgeway is the founder of Rise Up Rochester, a nonprofit focused on empowering the community to establish and maintain a nonviolent culture. She started after her first nephew was killed. We need y'all to step up. We need to see what our kids are doing. Parents, ask your children what are they doing. You got to find out before it's too late. You know, it's, this, this is too much. Jacquees was going to be a junior at East High in September. The principal there says that he is the seventh East High student to be murdered in the last eight years.
And tomorrow at 6 p.m., Wanda and Rise Up Rochester will be holding a Walk With Me service at Perks Park, where the youth will be able to come out and talk and walk with mentors of the community. Now, this is still an open investigation. If you have any information, call 911 or Crime Stoppers. Attack at the House of Mercy. Residents served by the shelter are moving to a temporary home. Their lives upended after this weekend's murder at the shelter. 13 Wham's Dalton Williams found out they were relocated again today. Yes, residents staying at the House of Mercy had to be moved out of their shelter Sunday night so police could conduct the murder investigation. They were temporarily relocated to the lodge at MLK Park downtown amid the search for a new shelter. The homeless individuals who had been staying at the House of Mercy were relocated once again after their shelter had become the site of a homicide investigation Sunday night. Nathaniel Jean-Pierre III accused of stabbing one man to death and wounding another while the victims lay in their beds. This was a, a, a horrible uh, traumatic incident that happened at House of Mercy uh, earlier this week and uh, Monroe County was asked and of course we offered to offer whatever support House of Mercy might need. Some individuals were taken in by other local shelters while the House of Mercy teamed up with the county and city to relocate the rest of its residents to a lodge in MLK Park temporarily. And then the news 24 hours later. Unfortunately, our time here is up. There is an event that's transpiring and just due to other, you know, circumstances, we do have to find another place. These are emergency locations. It's very difficult. We're happy to provide that support and assistance. We're going to continue to do that as the House of Mercy works through this until they can open their doors again. We spoke with County Executive Adam Bello today, who says a new temporary shelter was secured and residents are being moved once again until the House of Mercy can reopen. In the meantime, the county is helping with supplies. We're going to help with, um, you know, cots, food, uh, things like that to make sure that, uh, that you know, these, these uh, individuals who are some of the most vulnerable people that we have here in our county uh, are taken care of. The House of Mercy will be closed for at least two weeks. The county executive didn't want to reveal the location of the new accommodations. The shelter is working with state and local officials to conduct a security review. In the newsroom, I'm Dalton Williams.